Coming up on This Week in Baseball, the Blue Jays close out Exhibition Stadium with one last blast before heading for greener pastures. So long to a great slugger. The 3-0 pitch. Swing and long drive! The career 500 home run for Michael Jack Smith! And getting a new twist on the boys of summer as Julie Croteau joins the all-male ranks. Beginnings and endings next on This Week in Baseball. Brought to you by Miller Genuine Draft. Cold filtered for real draft taste. Mike Schmidt stood his old familiar stance one last time. He walked Schmidt to load the bases. Next day, to the surprise of most everyone, the Phillies' great slugger said goodbye to all that. Over the years of my career, I've set high standards for myself as a player. I've always said, said that when I, I don't feel I can perform up to those standards, that it would be time to retire. My skills to do the things on the field, to make the adjustments needed to hit, to make the routine play on defense, and to run the bases aggressively have, have deteriorated. I feel like I could easily ask the Phillies to to make me a part-time player and hang around for a couple of years to add to my uh, statistical totals. However, my respect for the game, my teammates, and the fans won't allow me to do that. For these reasons, I've decided to retire as an active player. Some 18 years ago, I left Dayton, Ohio with two very bad knees. and a dream to become a Major League Baseball player. I thank God that dream came true. <laughs> Schmidt's dream came true when he was drafted by the Phillies in 1971. Two years later, he came up for good and took over third base. But although he was showing signs of power, he failed to hit even 200. Well, I've seen Mike play, I guess, uh, virtually every game he's played since he came up. And uh, I saw him hit 195 his first year. Uh, I heard one of our managers say I'd trade Mike Schmidt for a load of pumpkins. That was in, in his first couple of seasons. Spring training is a time of new beginnings. And that's just what Mike Schmidt needed after spending much of 73 in Danny Ozark's doghouse. I said, you're going to hit the way I want you to hit, or you can take off. I said, your damn 198 average didn't impress me or anybody else, and your 245 average over there didn't impress me. It's odd that most people who have watched Schmidt through the years will say that he could have been better. Now, we're talking about a guy who had 10 gold gloves, I don't know how many home run titles. He has a chance to hit 600 home runs. I don't know how he could have been much better. But watching him offensively and defensively, is it's, it's one of the greatest thrills I've had in baseball. He was the hardest hitting third baseman of all time, smashing more homers and driving in more runs than any of them. His career, 548 homers, ranked seventh all time. Also, three MVP awards and a World Series MVP in 1980 when he hit 381 and drove in the winning run in the clincher. Schmidt's hard work in the field paid off with 10 gold gloves, most of any National League third baseman and second only to Brooks Robinson. His great range made him every shortstop's pal. He made my job real easy. Uh, he went to his right, he went to his left. He led offensively as well as defensively. Uh, a very quiet type leader. The greatest third baseman ever to go down in the history of baseball as far as I'm concerned. He's a Hall of Fame player, just a matter of waiting five years. He came in in class and he went out in class. Two years ago, Schmidt joined an elite class of home run greats when he hit number 500, a dramatic ninth inning game winner. A 3-0 pitch. Swing and long drive! There it is! Number 500! The career 500th home run for Michael Jack Schmidt! The Phillies have regained the lead at Pittsburgh. 8-6, and the Phillies dugout comes swarming out to home plate. 
just one of the great memories Schmidt left behind. I would just like to be remembered as, as a guy that worked very hard. You know, I've had the label over my career as a guy who, who things came easy for. Um, in some cases, that might be true. Uh, uh, I'm thankful to have been given the talent at birth to play sports in general. But uh, I think uh, that I've made myself uh, a much better player than I was ever supposed to be through hard work, spent a lot of time at the ballpark, a lot of time in practice, a lot of, I've done a lot of thinking, uh, uh, a lot of analyzing, I've made a lot of adjustments over my career, I think, that have allowed me to, to do such thing as hit around 550 home runs. And in addition to, to being a hard worker, I would hope that some of my former teammates, some of the younger players here now, uh, will remember me in terms of leadership. Uh, that's been a questionable area as far as Mike Schmidt's concerned in my career, and uh, nothing would make me happier than, uh, than to have left something behind and, and be talked about in terms of a good leader. Now we go from the end of a career to the end of a ballpark. The Blue Jays are leaving Exhibition Stadium, their home since the team started out 12 years ago. And as fans gathered for one last time, parting was no sweet sorrow. It's nothing in this ballpark for, for baseball fans. So you can see there's about 10,000 good seats in the stadium. It's terribly designed for baseball, but it never was designed for baseball. It's designed for Canadian football. There's not one thing that ever can describe this place. It, it really isn't. It takes a, lot of, uh, takes a lot of words in which I'm not at liberty to say on camera here. Well, we came 500 miles to see this. Blue Jays. Some seats are too far away to see much of anything. But from choicer seats, fans got to witness George Bell's parting shot. A home run in the first game and a blast in the last. But all that's history now. The Blue Jays are off to greener pastures at their new quarters, the Sky Dome. Built by the city at a cost of $500 million, the Sky Dome has just about every state-of-the-art feature, including a sliding roof. Of course, our rotatable roof is, is uh, world-renowned by now, I would assume. Uh, when it's fully retracted, 90, 91% of the whole stadium will be in sunlight. This was a simple solution that achieved what we wanted to achieve, which was a round dome on a round stadium, which could retract and telescope all at one end of a stadium and still remain in its retracted position. So you have a combination of straight rollback motion panels and a panel which moves on a circular track. And that's the secret. The Sky Dome is more than a ballpark. There's a hotel, a health club, restaurants, and a scoreboard nine stories wide. How about that? All of these other uses could form a backdrop to the scoreboard and something for the fans to look at in between in things happening on the field. So you could look at the nice girls up in the restaurant or whatever it happened to be, or in the bedroom, whichever. So the building became a pleasure palace, I guess. It, it was a a mixture of everything. Rain or shine, opening day next week. Now, this week's quiz brought to you by today's Chevy truck. Mike Schmidt hit 30 or more home runs 13 times. Only one player has ever done it more. Know who? Jim Abbott was the big news on the California Angels. But lately, a player's story of courage has given way to the team's story of rebirth as the pitching staff has turned right around, bringing the Angels to first place for the most shutouts and best ERA in the league. It's early, and I don't think um, we're overly confident or cocky about where we are now. But uh, the key for us has been, I think, the starting pitching. We've been getting seven innings, seven strong innings out of the starters. And uh, even through the early part of the year when our offense wasn't there, uh, the pitching kept us there to, to, for a chance to win ball games. And now that our offense is coming around, we're starting to feel better and better about, about where we are and what we can do. Late swing by Evans and a fitting ending to the ball game as McCaskill fooled the Red Sox all day long. 
quite a change for McCaskill, who was hurt much of the last two years. But this season, he won six of his first seven and looks to have his old stuff back. Well, I don't ever want to say that I'm back. I can remember a couple of years ago, in one paper, there was an article that said, you know, McCaskill is back. And sure enough, you know, two months later, I was hurt again. So, you know, I'm just trying to stick it through the year. I'm trying to play a full year. I think that if I get the innings in, uh, the winds will come and I'll be able to help out the ball club that way. So my number one goal is just to remain healthy. Nothing but sound numbers from Chuck Finley. Also on a comeback, he lost 15 games last year, but this season, seven wins, an ERA below two, and a near no-hitter. That is going to loop into center field. Coming on, Devon White, he can't make the catch, and that spoils the no-hit bid. I knew if I got ran out there enough that the chance would come where I'd be a winning pitcher sooner or later, and this year I think that's what's made the difference. The innings that I piled up last year and the uh, experience that I got, and taking that into this year, I think that's what's made me a different pitcher. But I think Chuck's matured a little bit. You know, I can remember sitting, uh, seeing him sitting out in the parking lot about an hour before game time eating a burrito and french fries, and uh, he's come a long way from there. The whole staff has come a long way since finishing year bottom in ERA last year. But with Lance Parrish's veteran guidance, the young pitchers have revised their thinking. He really stressed to us in spring training that he would like to see us pitch inside a lot more. And uh, that's one thing I had trouble with in the past was pitching inside. And uh, he really stressed to me that he thinks that I'd be a, a much better pitcher if he could start pitching inside a lot more. And that's what we started doing from day one at spring training is pitching inside. And I think it's really helped a lot of the guys on the staff. Well, I, I would hope that I've had some kind of a positive uh, influence on our pitching staff. You know, I'm not going to try to compare myself to Bob Boone or, or the way he went about calling a ball game or running a ball game. But I am a very big believer that a pitcher has to pitch inside. You know, there's quite a few guys that have been successful in the past that say that if you can't pitch inside, you can't win the big leagues. It establishes a respect from the hitter for the pitcher. And I think that not only when you pitch inside does it uh, give you that that opportunity to get that advantage that way, but it also opens the outside part of the plate for you. It's just a situation where I really believe that, you know, I have had a, a good influence. We are working well together, and things are kind of snowballing now. It's just a good relationship all the way around. Step by step, the Houston Astros have climbed up from bottom to go above 500, winning six in a row and 10 straight on the road. Put matinee idol Mike Scott in his usual starring role on the pitching staff. Seven wins, an ERA below three, and a slew of strikeouts. As for Houston's leading hitters, Bill Doran's back in the groove after a season of injuries. He's up near 290, and as usual, playing brilliantly in the field. But when it comes to power, Everyone plays sidekick to Glenn Davis. His 12 homers are almost half the team's total. And this clout ended one long drop. Fly ball out into left center field. And this ball will be gone. Three run blast for the big bopper. We haven't had many of those. In fact, that was Houston's first three run homer since last August. 101 games to be exact. Of course, Davis is the man for the job. Glenn, how about telling us your strengthening secret? Thanks, Mel. One of the drills and one of the exercises that I like to use to help me to get ready for the season is basically just using this little surgical tubing here, and it helps me get that little extra mm into the ball. And of course, you know you need it at the Astrodome, but you just stick your hand here, make your little circle on the end of this surgical tubing, and act like you're going to hit the ball, and you just go through the motion of hitting the ball nice and easy. It helps you to get that extension in your front arm, helps you get that front arm through to hit the ball. Then you can add your back one onto it the same way and helps you get that backhand coming through too so you can stay on top of the ball. That tip from a slugger who's on his way to 30 home runs for the third time. Now, the answer to this week's quiz brought to you by today's Chevy truck. Hank Aaron, the all-time home run leader, hit 30 or more homers 15 times. Most of any player ever. Nice. He's like any boy who grew up playing catch in the backyard. 
Nothing happened any different to Julie than happens to any little boy or girl who plays Little League. And, you know, in the spring, everybody gets real excited, and um, there's games, and there's parents cheering, and there's other kids. The exact same thing. There's not really too much to do around here in Prince William County, and baseball is a real big thing, and Julie just played just like any other kid. Then, eventually, someone told her no, and she just said, well, I don't want to accept no, and then that's when all this happened. What happened was that Julie was cut from the senior varsity baseball team at Osborne Park High School, and she sued for sex discrimination. She lost the case, but she won the admiration of a reporter who runs a semi-pro team in the Virginia Baseball League. I'm a reporter here, and I was covering uh, the lawsuit that her parents filed against the uh, school system in Manassas. It was just a very difficult thing for her, anybody to go through, especially somebody her age. When they, it was thrown out of court, the whole Osborne Park team was there, and they were jumping up and down like they'd won the World Series. And she was crushed. I could see how much she loved baseball and how hard she was fighting. Uh, I just couldn't have lived with myself if I didn't give her a chance to come down here and see what she could do. And she's done very well. In her second season with the Giants, Julie has won the starting job at first base and now feels accepted. It was really nice finally to get credit for being a baseball player. I mean, when I was a senior, it was, you know, well, can she play or she just trying to get attention? And people were coming out and everything I did, I was being judged on. And at St. Mary's, finally, like, look, she made it, she can play. There are always people who want to see her fail. And that may sound like a negative thing to say, but I think it's true. And uh, she's overcome that. So I do have a great deal of admiration for her. She is sort of a hero. At the age of 18, does Julie dream the dreams of every baseball playing kid? I'm gonna give it all I've got now and um, see what I can do with it. And if I can play three more years at St. Mary's, that's nice, you know. If I can transfer to another, you know, maybe a larger school or a better program, that'd be nice too, you know, whatever. It's just, it's all up in the air now. Take it day by day. <laughs> Now, our play of the week, brought to you by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Cleveland's Joe Carter dreamed up a real surprise when facing Mark Williamson with two down in the last of the ninth, no score, and a runner on third. He drops a foot. Williamson's got to make the play. And can't do it. The Indians win it. Carter's bunt ended the Orioles' five-game winning streak and left them flat out stunned. Next week, an update on Ken Griffey Jr., 1987's number one draft pick. Also, Willie Banks, that year's number three pick. And that's all for now, folks. See you next week on This Week in Baseball. for all the baseball excitement as the Detroit Tigers go up against the Baltimore Orioles live from Tiger Stadium tomorrow at 1. And get an up-close look at the Pistons' playoffs picture and find out if the bad boys are good enough to go all the way on Sports Final Edition tomorrow night at 11.30. Now stay tuned for more sports action as the Chicago Cubs go head-to-head -head with the St. Louis Cardinals next, only on Channel 4.